In this video, we'll be going over the cotton cattle railroads and oil vocabulary for the unit. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Our first word is pacifism. Uh, pacifism is the belief that any violence, including war, is unjustified in, under any circumstance and that all disputes should be settled by peaceful means. Um, so this is basically talking about uh, settling any sort of conflict without violence. Um, so that's a pacifist view is to the fact that uh, you don't want any war, no violence, no nothing. Maybe sit down and talk about it, uh, work it out in a peaceful manner. Our next word is drive. Um, so this is to propel or carry along by force in a specified direction. In terms of this unit, we're talking about a cattle drive. Um, so a cattle drive is going to be um, something that is used to take cattle from one location to another, usually to meet a railroad, um, a you know pickup location for the railroad so that you can get your cattle across the United States. Next one is Jim Crow laws. Uh, this is a state and local law that enforced racial segregation in the southern United States. So basically with these Jim Crow laws, um, they're going to have uh, a different spot for colored people and white people. When we're talking about colored people, most of the time we're talking about black or African American. Um, and so these these uh, Jim Crow laws are going to be separate but equal, right? And so um, everybody has access to a water fountain, but you know there's a white water fountain and then there's a colored water fountain. So that's going to be uh, a Jim Crow laws to segregate everybody um, and of the different races. Next word is segregated, right? And so we talked about the Jim Crow laws segregating people, but what does that actually mean? Um, segregate means to set apart from each other, isolate or divide. And so um, these are going to be. Uh, tough times in the United States, especially the southern United States, um, because we're going to, you're going to see a lot of segregation and, and it's not going to be um, great for the, for the country. Uh, the next word we have is stockyards, and stockyard is a uh, large yard containing pens and shed, typically ad adjacent to a slaughterhouse in which livestock is kept or stored. Um, so here in Texas, we have a pretty famous stockyard, it's the Fort Worth stockyards. Um, to this day, they do a cattle drive every day, I think maybe twice a day, um, but they uh, let some longhorns loose uh, down the, the roads of the stockyard, which have now turned into like shops and restaurants and things like that, um, uh, dance halls and things. Um, but they let these cattle go and they kind of drive them down the road and then uh, put them back in the pens. But it's just to, to pay tribute to um, everything that happened back in the history of you know the cattle drives and being at the Fort Worth stockyard so it's it's pretty interesting to see uh, suffrage is the next word and this is the right uh, to vote in political elections uh, so we talk about women's suffrage which is the women's right to vote we talk about uh, African American suffrage um, which is the you know just the right to vote and so that's all it is it's not you know you're not suffering from anything or anything like that um, you're just it's you're just your right to vote next word we have is buffalo soldiers uh, this is an african-american soldier who mainly served on the western frontier following the american civil war um, so these buffalo soldiers are going to be basically responsible for protecting the western frontier um, throughout the civil war or throughout the time after the civil war um, protecting from the Indian raids and everything like that. And it is an all African American um, group of soldiers. Next word we have is transcontinental, uh, which is to extend or go across the entire continent. Uh, so this is going to be talking about, when we talk about the railroad, we're talking about a transcontinental railroad. Um, and that is a railroad that extends from east coast to west coast. And so um, we need to know that transcontinental. If you break it down, right, trans means to go across and continental is, you know, the continent. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a pretty basic uh, term there if you break it down. Next word we have is monopoly. You've probably heard the, of the game. You've probably played the game. Um, we'll talk about this in... Uh, you know, in the unit, but when you monopolize something, you have the exclusive possession or control of the supply 
or trade in uh, of a service. Okay, and so uh, the monopoly here is going to be um, basically owning everything, or owning the the rights to everything, or being able to uh, provide your service to everybody. So look at it like this: if you were a plumber, and the nearest other plumber was you know 300 miles away. Right, you've monopolized the area because there is no other person that anybody can call. So you can set your prices high, you can, you know, do work on your own schedule because they have no other option. So you've monopolized it. Just like in the game where you're trying to own everything, right? You're trying to bankrupt people and uh, buy them out, right? You're trying to make it a monopoly uh, and be the only one that has any services. Next word we have is refinery, uh, which is an industrial installation where substance is refined. We'll talk about refineries in the oil unit, um, but we talk about uh, refinery making uh, chemicals or you know petroleum out of the ground into something that we can use, uh, whether it's gasoline or engine oil or uh, diesel fuel or jet fuel. Okay, they have to take that oil out of the ground and then make it into something else. You can't just put all that stuff in your car and expect it to run. Next word we have is entrepreneur, which is a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on greater than normal uh, financial risk in order to do so. So an entrepreneur is um, going to be somebody that is is the owner of the business. So basically a small business, um, it may get to a large business, but if you've ever heard like a Kickstarter, Excuse me, if you ever heard like a Kickstarter or something like that, okay, that person would be an entrepreneur. So they have an idea, they want to create a business, they're going to take on so much risk to do so, but it's, you know, it's worth it for them. And so they're going to, they're going to own the business and operate it. Next word we have is boomtown, uh, which we'll talk about when we get to the oil industry. But this is a boomtown, uh, a town that experiences sudden growth in population and business. Um, mainly we're going to talk about this in oil, right? When they find oil, um, you're going to get a boom town. But the railroad's also going to be a little bit of a boom town because they're going to um, make railroad stops where the, you know, the cars have to refuel, the, the engines have to refuel and things like that. Um, and so that's going to create a, a boom town as well. Not to the extent that uh, the oil industry does, but uh, the railroad is going to make a big difference in, in towns in Texas. Next word we have is derrick, uh, which is a framework or tower that supports a drill uh, over a deep hole. So a, a derrick is basically going to be something that uh, we use to drill for oil, and uh, it's going to be a uh, vital vital part in in making uh, the oil industry successful in drilling for oil in Texas. Next word we have is reformers, uh, which is basically a reform movement that tried to uh, correct social and political problems. So anybody that's fighting for or you know protesting or anything could be considered a reformer, right? And so you're trying to you're trying to change people's minds into um, doing things the way you should or you see them how they should be done. Um, whether that's you're you're working for women's suffrage, right? The the right to vote for women, or um, you know, any any sort of cause that you, you think is near and dear to your heart, right? You can be considered a reformer there. Next word we have is progressivism, uh, which is a person who urges or works for improvement and change. Okay, so much like a reform, reformer, right, but you're, you're looking for a, a progressive change. It's not, um, it's, it's a little bit different, but they're almost the same. Next word we have is Federal Reserve Bank. Um, this is one of the 12 district banks of the Federal Reserve, um, the central most bank in the United States. And so the Federal Reserve is going to be in charge of interest rates and things like that, um, and also the money supply in the United States. Next word we have is conserva conservation, uh, which is the careful use of natural resource uh, to prevent them from being lost or wasted. Um, so this is basically what we're talking about with oil. So we have a lot of conservation efforts uh, with oil because it's a non-renewable resource. So when you talk about a non-renewable resource, you're talking about something that uh, can't be you know, made in a factory or anything like that. And so... Uh, you need to be careful with how much you're using because eventually it may run out. And that's going to do it for the 
uh, unit PowerPoint uh, or unit vocabulary for this unit. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got something out of it. Stay on top of your schoolwork, and we'll see you in the next one.